Hello, welcome to part three of patient retention. Patient retention is an important concept, something in the protocol which obviously can make a difference in your practice. This is something that will transfer, trans, you know, transpire in such a way that it will literally take different levels and take your patients from one level to the next to the next to the next and make your practice grow. Rather than thinking about acquiring so many more new patients, why not take care of the patients that you have in your office now and make sure that your patient retention is maximized. This is part three. There are two other videos that you should have been watching uh, prior to this one, but you're welcome to join at this point. We're in number 21 of the patient, patient retention protocol. And here's number 21. How to handle an upset patient? If he's upset in your office, what should you do? Well, first, look for signs that a patient is upset and try to be as professional and empathetic as possible. If someone appears upset, it might be a good idea at this point to simply ask how their day was. That's it. Just ask them, how's your day going? And it may not be anything that you've done but it could show a sign of little sympathy because you're working with them. And this will make a difference, something that will help them. They know that you're on their side. Be human. You don't have to be different. You just have to be nice. It can make a great impression. And just by being nice, it's a human thing to do. Even if they are exhibiting outward signs of distress, in whatever ways, by just showing that you care, or that you're interested in their demeanor can help fix a multiple, multiple aspect or a multitude of uh, concepts of different attitudes. And if it ends up that being upset, experiencing for you, fine. Try to take a few minutes, do those things to calm you down, and you don't have to pass on that stress. Just look at it and walk away. But take care of that. Number 22 on our list, you must continually train and educate your whole team. They have to work for you, with you, about your patients. It's not good if you keep telling yourself or everything that you have to do, you can do it yourself. Not good. If you're the only one making that effort, it's going to show. And then everybody else does their own thing. That's not what you want. As the saying goes, it takes a village to retain a patient. Have a great meeting to discuss the different aspects and the suggestions that you're making from the team and yourself. They may have a lot of things that they want to say based on their own experience. And then put up reminders, signs, classes, webinars, follow-up, cards, whatever you need to keep everyone on track. Because some days, let's face it, would rather not. However, it's important to keep in mind that on one negative day, on your part, can drive away a patient for a long time, maybe even forever. So everyone should work as a team and be there together, making sure that it works. Number three on our 23 on our list is tracking results. Every method in this video needs to be suited to your own individual practice. What may work for one office may be a total failure for another, and I know that better than anybody else because we have the largest healthcare consulting firm in the country with over 1,200 active clients nationwide in 45 states. I'm proud to say that no one can make that same claim. We've been in business since 1994. It's a long time. And prior to that, I was in practice. So I've seen a lot of things going on. Thousands and thousands and thousands of doctors have attended our seminars over the years. And whenever trying something new in your practice doesn't work, you need to know that. So you need to track the results so you can easily see what is working and what needs to change. What makes sure that in this case you know in advance what you would consider to be a success and then look at it. As a consultant, each client I advise is to me individual and unique. I never, never would ask my client just take care of this follow those forms and watch these videos. I would never do that. I am well aware that there are many consultants out there in order to get as many clients as they can. Make the unscrupulous decision to just 
let you pay the fee and just send you a bunch of videos, a bunch of things to do, and you do it all on your own. Here, I've put it all in the package, you learn it. That is not ethical, and that is not consulting, that is not management. That's just pushing you off. They want to get as many people as possible, that is not your problem. It should be time worth each moment to grow, to understand, to learn. And so, watching these videos and looking at this material, it is unprofessional to me. It's a cheap way to train doctors and their staff. Make sure that you don't do the same with your own staff. Take the time. Spend quality time training your staff. Thousands of very successful businesses, some of the top in the world, will show you that even the CEO or the head of the whole company, president or what have you, will take time to make sure that all their staff members, all their team are well trained because they'll support the system. They asked once Bill Gates what made him so successful and he said, I hire people who are smarter than me. It's an amazing lesson. And it stayed with me all these years, making sure that you surround yourself by a team of people who know what they're doing and help them, inspire them, lifting them in making sure that they are well trained. Here's number 24 on our list. Collect all the contact information that you can. It's important to have multiple updated contact sources for your patients, each and every one of them. It's a good idea to collect primary and secondary phone numbers maybe email addresses, and make sure that you copied it properly so that you can contact them. Each patient should be able to be reached on a regular basis. Today, with all the technology that exists between texting and WhatsApp and all of those things, you should be able to contact them easily, all the time, and make it quick so that they know what you're saying. Number 25 on our list is handling negative reviews properly. First of all, you should have a lot of reviews, as many as possible, five-star reviews. Reviews are based on the amount of reviews, how old are the reviews, and how many stars you got per reviews. Makes a big difference. Make sure that you know what you're doing. I know for a fact that many of our clients are working, as I mentioned earlier, with Attitude Marketing, uh, one of the companies that we refer many of our clients to. And they have been very successful in ensuring that um, they can get, that our clients can get many reviews. Why? That's the first thing that people look for. It's amazing. Above and beyond your services, even the location, they'll look for reviews. Even the best companies who receive negative reviews and those feedback on occasion have to be checked. Today, more than often, more than ever, Negative feedback is shared online in terms of reviews and on social media, and it can make a big difference for your office. If your practice at any time receives a negative review feedback, it's best to address it head on. Thank the person for the feedback and respond to their concern. If the feedback is of a sensitive nature or if the person didn't provide much detail, let them know that you would love to hear about their experience to make it right. Provide contact information so they can contact you directly and you'll help them reach out to you and get their problem resolved. Even if you can't fix the problem, by the way, most people want to know that they are heard and they want to know that they are acknowledged and that the issue or the apology that you're going to give them will make a difference and this can go a long way. Again, contact Attitude Marketing. We've partnered with them in many different things. They have a company called... Um, if I recall correctly, it's Bird Eye. Find out about it. It's quite amazing of what it does and, and the discounting fees that they can get you. This will make a big difference. I have other videos, by the way, that I've made about uh, how to make the best of your online reviews and what have you. You should look at them. It does make a difference. Number 26 on our list is little things you should know go a long way. Look for small ways that can make a big impact on your patient's overall experience. People love that concept of experiencing different things. This is something that you have to do so you can, your patients can say, wow, this is amazing. The gestures don't have to be big or expensive, but they rather show that you care about their experience while they are there. Things that they do when you're in your office. 
small things such as offering a bottle of water when they arrive. And it could have your name on it, you could brand yourself, or maybe a free mask with all that's going on today, and you could have your logo. A simple gift, but it will go a long way to differentiate your office from the ones down the street. And if you want more ideas, by the way, you can go to drdehan.com and click on all products. I have 64 successful marketing ideas that will transform your business. You can go to drdehan.com and download it. You can use it. This information is invaluable, I promise you, for what you'll be doing. Number 27 on my list is during your treatments, communicate what you are doing and this will, again, go a long way in helping with patient retention. It often relieves a lot of stress when you explain everything that you're doing to a patient. No matter how obvious it may seem to you, your patient may have some questions. This will make a difference. You have to pay attention to that. Number 26 on our list is avoiding side conversations. Nothing, I can tell you for a fact, nothing shouts more that you're not important than when having a side conversation with another employee or another medical provider or medical assistant during your visit. Take the time to get to know your patients. Pay attention to their needs and their wants. Leave your side conversations for between appointments or after hours. Anything that you want to say that's not to directly speak about the patient should be done somewhere else at a different time. Make sure that you don't get confused between your patients and your family member. With family, you can do that. You can have your spouse, your partner, your friends, and your siblings, and whomever you wish. Speak to them and go back and forth. You can't do that with patients. They look for focused attention, and they deserve it. Number 29 on our list is memorizing one fact about each patient. This is a secret in my practice that I grew in a multi-million dollar concept which I've created in my own practice. Depending on the size of your practice, this may be difficult, but it will make a huge impression on everyone who walks through the doors. Everyone, and this is known, wants to feel special and important. Knowing at least one thing about each patient will let you have a tailored conversation that makes them feel valued. Makes a difference on that. Plus, talking with your patients about their interests helps them make time go easier. And you might learn a thing or two about them. So it is critical that you have this one connection between them. And I'm sure that some of you already do, but the question is, do you have it with every single patient? That's what makes a difference. Number 30 on our list is try to give them something for free. That's all it is. One principle of psychology called the law of reciprocity can really help out with patient retention. This is a fact. Basically, if you give someone something for free, they naturally feel like they need to return the favor in some way or shape to you or some form. If your patients feel that they are getting something for free, they will feel a natural desire to keep coming back to your practice and even refer at least a family member to your practice. And what can you give them? You can make so many choices. My practice was literally across the street from the ocean. That's where I live. And because of that, we gave out free towels. And my towels had my logo and my name on each and every one of them. It was quite amazing at times to walk down on the pier and see hundreds of towels with my name on it because we gave them out freely to every single patient. And they advertised it and they advertised for me. My clinic was one of the largest clinics in Southern California for many years when I was in practice. And I'm proud of that. So give them free things. Now, of course, you can give them the little things that people might say it's cute, a little sticker, this and that. That's cute. But give them something of value, something that they would appreciate as a gift. Number 31 on our list is the free day. Something of a community outreach. Outreach is something that you should do at all times. Offering a day or half a day perhaps for free services and it can reactivate in this case many patients, their families and their friends and some of those who may have been overdue for an appointment. 
sometimes people are afraid to come in for an appointment because it's been so long since they've been in and they don't know what to do, they don't know how to get back. Other times they feel like they can't afford to make an appointment because of their insurance coverage has changed or they've lost coverage entirely, whatever the case may be. Often a free exam to get them back in the door and help them understand the options that you have for any follow-up treatment can make a big difference. Chances are they will return to you for any follow-up care from that moment onward. And you've reactivated a patient who's already known who you were from before and now gets to know you again. Here's the last one on our list. There's 32 concepts which we discussed in those three-part video. And this is the last one. Always communicating results clearly during the report of findings. No matter if it was finding from your exam or your x-rays, be sure to communicate the results with your patients. Make sure that you explain these results in a way that makes sense to them, in the way where they may worry about themselves or their condition, but take away that worry. Make sure that if there is nothing wrong, let them know what's going on. Let them know what you're doing. Help them with that. Now, I told you there were 32 concepts, and I'm going to give you a couple more as a freebie. This is a surprise, but this is something that has been added because it's worked in many of our offices. One is about birthdays. You know, it's interesting today, everybody knows their birthday, of course, but not many people remember other people's birthday. And especially in today's day and age, everything being electronic and digital, we often forget that people see the message and pass it right on. And it says on Facebook or Instagram or any of the other social platform, happy birthday, Jack, thank you, good luck to you. It's different if you send them a card. Everyone loves their birthday. Celebrate your patient's birthday by sending them a personalized text message. That's good. That lets them know that you care today. It can mean a lot to them. And it's a strong signal that you care about them. But you should also send them a personalized birthday card. You should do that. It is inexpensive. You can get a couple hundred made. And then write a nice message. And if you can, make that message even more personalized. By saying, Jack, I know you just moved in into your new home. And I thought, since this was your birthday, I wanted to take this opportunity and wish you the best in everything that you do and a great, healthy year for many more good, happy occasions. And you sign, Dr. Dayan. A small token of appreciation, a birthday card. Probably today, in today's day and age, the only card they might get in the mail. Quite amazing. That may be the only card they receive in the mail. So if you prepare this in advance and you send it to them two, three days prior to that, they will get it right on their birthday, depending on where you're located. It will make a big difference. Patients will be highly impressed by this handwritten card in today's DNH. And this, again, may be the only card they get. Here's the last one as a bonus, number 34. As I mentioned to you, there'd be two more. Just like birthdays, feel free to send people a fun greetings for major holidays. This can be even a minor holiday. This is something that they would not anticipate coming from you. Now you may want to do it as a text message. It's a 4th of July and you might just say, Jack, happy 4th to you and your family. Be safe. Or it could be an email that you send them wishing you personalized email, wishing you a happy and healthy, memorable 4th of July, whatever you wanted to say, or it could be a card that's a little extensive because people are not used to getting cards for national holidays, but certainly a recognition on the text. In conclusion, when it comes to the business of healthcare, it's just as important to retain patients as it is to get them in your door. In fact, studies show that it costs seven times less to retain a patient than attract a new one. There are multiple strategies which can be executed to improve your patient's retention efforts. A diligent focus around all the small details of the customer experience creates a foundation for success. When implemented, 
these efforts economically enhance your operations above and beyond anything that you could have imagined. Setting yourself apart from the competition means setting your practice up for success in the long term because they'll keep coming back until you give them a reason not to. And I know because I have hundreds of clinics that I manage on a daily basis and they tell me their results and they are much better when they look and think and apply these concepts. Thank you very much and I wish you the best in everything that you do. God bless you.